Okay, so before we get into the actual component calculation section of this project, I thought it'd be good to actually go over the schematic. So what we're looking at, this is the final schematic that we'll end up with at the end of the schematic capture process. What I've done is I've kind of taken it and I've tried to annotate it in a way that kind of filters out any of the noise and allows us to focus on some parts that matter. Because like I said, if this is your first project you've ever done, you're, you probably take one look at this circuit and are like, what is going on here? This is, there's, this is so much more than stuff I've ever seen. So real quick, what I want you to do is, is take a deep breath and try to focus on the things I, I have in the, the red circles. Specifically, look at this part down here. So if you'll notice, right away you'll see, okay, look, I can tell what this is. This is a MOSFET. What is this MOSFET doing? Let's follow this path up here. This goes into one of the windings of the transformer. Um, and where does it, where does it uh, go to on the other side? It goes to ground. So hopefully you can kind of spot that what really is going on here is you have current flowing through the primary side of the transformer and then going to ground. And this MOSFET is controlling that actual process, okay? And what is this MOSFET connected to? It's connected to our flyback controller. So this pin right here is responsible for opening and closing the switch right here. So that's all that's going on. This is the, the basic operations of the flyback converter. And that I've gone over a video talking about this. Um, so hopefully this looks familiar to some of the other circuits I've featured on this channel. Um, but now we're actually looking at a real one um, with actual components and stuff that we, we've designed. So like I said, yes, yeah, so we have current flowing through here and that's being controlled by the MOSFET. And then, like I said, we have our flyback controller here that's actually controlling the switch. What do we have on the output? We have our output diode. That is controlling, that's keeping the, the current from flowing in a reverse direction. We know why that's the case. And then here, we have a smoothing capacitor on the output. This is just to keep, if you notice, like in, with the humps that form, you rectify something, you need a capacitor to kind of smooth those. We'll look at some waveforms in a later video to see why that's the case. But hopefully, what you can do is, is with this, <laughs> with this, wonderfully filtered out schematic you can take a look at things and realize okay this is really not that bad i've already you, hopefully you're in a you're starting from a familiar place where then we can kind of start to wade out into the deep end and kind of see everything else that's going on in the circuit but i really wanted to get us to start in a familiar place um and then i'll go to another one in a second but real quick i want to mention so this is what is our rectifier uh circuit right here we have actually our full wave rectifier, the, that diode configuration right here. And then you have smoothing capacitors. This whole circuit is referred to as several names. You can, you can call it uh, a generic term is like a, uh, an input filter. Um, but this specific formation is known as a pi filter. We can look, we'll, we'll do a video on it later. Um, but basically, yeah, so this, if, if we're looking at this as well, so this is like phase one is rectification and smoothing, right? So this is converting AC to DC and giving us a nice clean DC signal. That's what this part's doing. And then this part is, is the actual flyback part that we've spent the last several videos talking about the operation of. So hopefully this part puts you in a very familiar place for when I then go to the next part. So here, like I have, like I said, I circled, this is the actual rectifier circuit right here. Um, now what we, what I want to look at is now I've taken away, we can see all those resistors and capacitors and you're probably like, oh my gosh, what is, what is all this doing? Like your, your brain's probably trying to do the only thing my brain knew how to do when I started, which is try to try to calculate the voltage drop across these things and see what, what it's doing, which I'm going to say relax. Um, if you ask me honestly, what like say if you look at this and ask me what these resistors do, I would tell you I don't know exactly what they're doing. I know it has something to do with the power of our actual chip. Um, the data sheet will tell you specifically what it does and it'll tell you how to calculate those values. But I'm not, whenever I look at these resistors, I'm not trying to calculate voltage drops or anything like that. Like I have a general idea that this is powering our, our, uh, our um, flyback controller right here. But I don't, I'm not sitting here calculating current flows and voltage drops through any of this, okay? So I know the general idea, but I don't really fret over, over trying to figure out exactly how current's flowing through the circuit.
um I get the same with that's pretty much the story with all of the res all of the resistors down here right here 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 and here all these down here you don't really have to worry about how the current's flowing through them and the voltage drops and stuff like that like it tell you it'll tell you what the values need to be but if i were to sum them up in one sentence it would be these what i'll call minor components are to just ensure proper operation their their sole job is to get this ic to do to flip this switch on and off correctly like they're just there because the when, when you connect them in a certain way they give information to these pins and these pins are based on the information that's input into all these different pins that controls the switch that's that's pretty much what's going on right there um, I'll tell you so real quick too while you're looking at the transformer so this is the primary side this is the secondary side and this is what is known as the auxiliary side of the transformer so this is a very common formation set up with flyback controllers converters um, what, what the job of the auxiliary side of this is to supply power to our chip right because our chip needs power it's a computer basically so it needs some power so it can run because it has some special algorithm basically what the chip has is a special algorithm or algorithms inside it and it's just running them and think of it like a very simple calculator or a very complex calculator i should say and it's based on the calculations and input information it's telling that switch to turn on and or off and it needs power to do that so just like this secondary winding is supplying power to the usb to charge the device the auxiliary winding is supplying power to the controller so that it can do its controller job I will say it's a very, very tiny amount of power. We're talking like microamps or milliamps, like milliwatts of power is what it takes to run this thing. Just know that's what's going on here. So you have primary, secondary, auxiliary. Okay. Primary's job is to um, have the, the big AC rectified into DC current flowing through it. And then it's going to transfer it to the secondary. It also transfers it to the auxiliary as well through the switching process but um just know that's that's what this that's what the whole purpose of this is and then lastly i guess i'll go over what these are these are just the connectors uh, maybe if you've never seen connectors in altium this is just the way i drew mine in the circuit and no so these little red x's mean there's nothing connected here so we just have something in line and neutral this is like safety ground but since the the uh, power is so low, you don't really need it. You don't. It does, it's not required for this application. And then here we have no data going because it's just a charger. So that's kind of what that is. But yeah, these I just figured I'd glue these in here um, in case you were confused. But hopefully this this circuit um, looks a little less overwhelming now when you're trying to think about trying to figure out everything that's going on in it. And don't worry. Uh, I will go over specifically how to calculate all the component values and everything else that go into this. So at the end, by the time we're done with this, you'll be like, okay, this is actually really simple. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much all I want to cover for a brief overview of the schematic. I think the next part will start actually calculating component values. And so yeah, looking forward to it. Like I said, uh, please like and subscribe if you're getting any value from this um, and also like I said drop a like or a dislike uh, that will help me out with the YouTube algorithm I really appreciate that um, so yeah thank you so much